Debbie. I'm hoping that you guys can hear me and everything is good. So I'm going to wait until someone says hi. There we go. Hi, Meg. How are you guys doing tonight? So I was talking to Jamie today and she challenged me to do some paper piecing and some uh, masking tonight with this Ola stamp set. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but we have this in the shop. We used it for our retreat in November. Hello, Cheryl. And it's super cute, but if you don't know how to put the stuff on the girl or how to stamp it, then it makes it a little bit challenging. So I thought tonight we would play around with it. I had to do a little prep work to get ready for it. So you guys wouldn't have to watch me cutting out the masking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to go over how I did all of that, but I won't actually be doing that part tonight, but I will do the masking and stamping. So hi, Sherry. Okay, so this is our stamp set. It's called Ola O O T D. I, I'm sorry for the life of me. I'm having a brain freeze and I can't remember what O. OTD means I just I'm drawing a blank I can't remember but anyway the Ola this is the Ola stamp set I'll just call it Ola because <laughs> it's got Ola and hi and hello and thank you on it so I stamped out a couple of things for us to play with and I'll show them to you as I go along and die cut a few things but I wanted to do all the things that we could do with this set that most people don't know. So um, I have my Memento ink. We're going to do some masking. So I have my Sweet Sentiment paper. This is the masking tape that I used. It's by Gina K. It's ultra thin masking paper. We're going to reuse the ones that I cut out over and over again. So I actually already cut them, played around with them. These are used, but these are the masks that I have cut out already. And then I have one of just her head, which seems a little funny, but when I show you how to use it, it'll make more sense. So I've already peeled off the back. So these are sticky. So I'm just sticking them on my desk in front of me so I can keep track of them. And then um, I also punched, I, I stamped the girl and I cut her out with the die cut. I'm going to buy that, but I passed it. I thought it would be a great one for Aaron with. So I will see, you will see what I do with it. Okay, so I used chipboard and I just used the die cut and cut out this girl. And then I cut out one that I stamped, and we're going to layer her so she'll be thicker, more like a paper doll that a little one could play with or use. I thought that would be pretty cute. So I did that. I also, um, I also prepared by um, cutting out some of the outfits and stuff, but I'm not going to show those because I think we should do those live. So let's talk about... Um, the paper piecing first. So we have um, we have these clothes. So I I wanted to start with doing um, this outfit on this girl. So I'm gonna show you. I'll show you the paper piecing second, but I'm gonna show you the stamping first because I feel like that takes just a little bit more time. So when you think about it. And tonight is the first time I've done this, so bear with me. If I mess up, I mess up, but I'm hoping, because I practiced once already, that we'll do good. So we have the three stamps right here. And what we want is we want this girl to come out and like this. So it's the all of this stamped, how, how would you mask it in order to get the girl to have the clothes on already? Hi, Mary. So I want to show you how to do that because I feel like it's, it's a bit 
it's a bit um, overwhelming and challenging. So I'm going to show you how that works tonight. So we want this girl on there, but we're going to want clothes. So we don't want to stamp any of this part of the girl. So what we have to do is we have to take these two pieces, the masks of these two pieces, which I have here. This is this one. And this is this one. And then I have to put them together. So the easiest way for me was to put it on the doll and find out where I would put, where I would put these pieces. So I just stamped them and then I laid them on top of here so I could see how far down I would want her jacket to go. So once I had it placed on there exactly how I wanted it, I then took them off together like this and laid them on the paper. So it kind of already has, hey mama, it kind of already has it set up and ready to go. So then I took the girl and I put her back on here over top of the clothes, setting her exactly where I wanted her to be with the clothes covering, covering the body. So what you're going to do is you're going to be stamping the body parts. You're going to be stamping over the mask. So all that's going to show is the part of the girl that we want to stamp. So now we have her and we'll see you'll see this process twice because we're going to do it with the dress as well. So we're going to take this one and we're going to place it over top of that. Then we're going to use our espresso and press it down. When you lift it up, you'll see that she looks like she's wearing this outfit. So we just pick this up. And now we have nothing underneath her. So you just have her head and her feet. So now I'm going to clean my stamp real quick. I am if I can find my, my cleaner. Oh, here it is oh, on my lap. And I'm just going to spray it and clean off this stamp. I got a lot of water on there, so I'm going to clean do it again with the dry area. And then I'm going to take my stamp off. And now I'm going to pull out the two pieces that I used masks for. So that would be this jacket and these jeans. Now we have to it's cool, right? Look, it's only part of the girl. Isn't that cool? I have to find an image to play with. This is a perfect image to play with the masking. So what you have to do is you have to think about which one is going to be on the bottom and which one's going to be on the top. So we placed it like this. So we're going to have to stamp the jeans first and the jacket second. But in order to do that, we have to place the jacket mask down so we don't see this part of her clothes doubled up. So I'm going to take these apart and now I'm going to place this one on top so I can see where I'd want to put that. I'm going to put this one down matching it back up with her her neck. And then I'm going to take these pants I got that crooked. Let me fix that. Okay, let's try that one more time. Okay, now I have her jacket on there. And then I'm going to place her pants. And the most important part is to make sure that the bottom part matches up with the bottom of her legs. So pardon my head for a minute. I need to be able to look really closely. I'm going to pick that up and now I'm going to stamp those jeans on there and I'm going to press it with my espresso with my espresso and now we have jeans so when we remove this part we just have jeans 
So isn't that neat? We're, we're kind of building her up from the bottom up. So now I'm just going to clean off my, my pants. I'm going to take them off my Misty. And it helps to have a Misty for sure. And then I'm going to place this part back on here. Now, my biggest concern was when you look at this stamp set right here, this part at the top is going to put a collar right around her neck. And we don't want that on her neck. So that is why I cut out her head. So we're going to place her head over top of where she is. Like this. That way, when we lay this coat down, we can line it up with her neck and with her jeans at the bottom. But we're not going to stamp that line across her neck. That's very important. So I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna put some ink on the back of that, on that jacket, raincoat, whatever you wanna call it. And then I'm gonna stamp the raincoat and press it with my espresso, lift it up. And when we remove her head, voila! Isn't that awesome? They line up so perfectly, and then you can color this girl, and you have her in the outfit that you wanted. Isn't that awesome? I just love it. I'm so super excited. And that was my practice run before, and this is um, during the live. So isn't that awesome? So that worked so well. Let's try it again one more time so you can see the process go through again. And you can do these with any of your stamps like this, but this particular stamp set was originally designed for people to practice coloring coats, clothes, dresses, folds, the skin. And this little clipboard right here was so you could put your colors in the little clipboard. So you can color in the little dot and write which color you did. So, it was set up for a practice stamp set, but I, I was like, there are so many other uses we can do with this and so many ways people can make more stamps out of one stamp set. So, hi Wanda. So I wanted you guys to see how this really works. Okay, and this is, this is the masking, but there's more because we haven't even done the paper piecing yet. So again, this time I want to put the girl's dress on her. So I have the girl and the dress. So first thing we're going to have to do is pull our mask for the dress. This is the mask for the dress. So I'm going to place that over the girl. And luckily I already stamped her once. So... We'll place this dress on here. And then we'll lay the girl on top of it. Exactly where we want her. And then we're gonna pick her up with our Misty. And we're gonna stamp her with our Memento ink so we can color her later. Not that I'll probably not color her tonight, but just so we have her. Um, and then we're going to press that with our espresso and now we have a girl. So when I lift her dress up, just like I did with the outfit, all you can see are her shoulders and her arms and her feet. So now we're gonna take the dress and we're gonna place it right over, let me see, I want it right over her Your feet. Huh? Your I know it is, but I have to look at it close, otherwise I can't line it up. Okay, so there we go. Maybe I can look in the video and see it a little better. Okay. So there's our dress on top of our girl. Oops, I forgot to clean her off and take her off. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so I'm gonna clean off the girl. 
take her off my Misty. I'm going to pick up the dress. I'm going to make sure I really like where that dress is. I think it needs to be scooted over just a little bit. Maybe right there. It'll take a little bit of practice for you to get it exactly right. I mean, we have a multi-liner. We can fix anything that doesn't match up exactly. I'll show you how quick and easy to do that if we run into any of that. But now you can take her dress, place it over top, and there you go. Now she has a dress on. So this is what I was talking about. And this one little spot down here, it didn't line up exactly. So all we need is a little multi-liner and draw in her foot. It's that simple. So easy and simple. So now we've turned this girl into this girl. Oh, I missed this foot. There we go. Perfect. So now we have this girl in a dress and you don't see any of the lines or the outfits underneath. So now we've created two different, this is a fairly new stamp set. It came out in November for our retreat and um, we originally set it up so you could practice folds and hoodies and clothes and then practice skin. but. You could also make these two girls out of that same stamp set just by piecing the outfits together. Now, I know you want to ask me, well, Sandy, those were fairly simple because you were just replacing these clothes. Hi, Renska. But what if I have this hoodie? I mean, how am I supposed to get her face inside this hoodie without it being colored? Yeah, they came out in November. They were never really advertised like a um, like a new release or anything. They were actually designed for the retreat. And then we offered them to everyone in this shop, but there was never a big market marketing for it. So I'm kind of marketing it now. So anyway, now you have these two. So now we have we have one more outfit that we can put this guy this gal in so I'm just gonna clean up my my dress and I'm gonna show you one more time how to do this so you guys can get really familiar with this this is gonna give a whole different look to our girl so next I'm gonna use those jeans again that we used before so I'm gonna pull pull out my little mask for the jeans and then I masked this one right here. So I did a full mask of that. And then what I did was I cut out the opening where her face was. And the way that I did that, hey Gayla, was I took the, the image, the stamp, and I laid this over top of it where it would go. I just took my scissors and cut a big hole right in the center and then I went around the outside so that I could see where I needed it to be so her face would show. So that's how I that's how I figured out exactly where the inside needed to be cut out. So once I had that, I decided I wanted to do her jeans and her top. So I'm going to place this one here just so I can see where it would be. And then I'm going to place the jeans below so I could see how far down I wanted to put them. And then stick those two together. So if we lay it on top, it's going to look like this. Well, as soon as I get it in, in spot, I think my hands are shaking, but I don't really know why. Got a little bit of shaky shaky tonight. There we go. So one, I'm gonna want it to go like this, but I need these jeans to line up with her body. They are not currently. So I'm gonna lift this up again and I'm gonna place them here. I have them on there. 
they're overlapping. Once I have them exactly where I want them, then I'll lift them off together like this and place them on my paper. Then I know exactly where they're supposed to be and they're already stuck together the way I need them to be. And then I take my girl, I need to eat some protein. I did eat, hubby made dinner, it was really yummy, but I'm still shaky shaky tonight. I don't know why. So my biggest concern is I don't want her hair showing outside of that hoodie. So I'm gonna make sure that it goes all the way around the way I need it to be. And then I also don't want her legs to hang out of her outfit. So I feel like I have her lined up pretty well. So I'm going to close this. So we're always putting the mask down first and then we're stamping the girl. It lifted a little, but I think it's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna stamp the girl and I'm gonna place her over top of the masking. When I lift her up, her face is inside. And when I lift this up, so you can see, voila. It looks a little funny, but we'll get there with the rest of it in a minute. They look a little funny when you're working on them just because you're only getting bits and pieces of the girl. But it's going to look great when you get done. Okay, so my next step is to grab the pants and the hoodie. And now I have to decide where I want to put these. So... I'm gonna take these pants off. So I'm gonna separate these two. I went a little bit under the waist. I'm going to lay this down and you can line it up with what's stamped on the mask. I think I want it up just a little bit. There we go. So once you have that on there, you probably want your mask to dry before you do that so you don't get black marks all over the place like I did. Okay, so once we have that on there, lined up where we want it. What am I cleaning for? Where's my helper? Oh, he's here. He's watching. Okay, I'm going to lift that up. I have that stuck, but it's okay. Oh, I've got some fuzzies on here, so I'm gonna take pick those off. I don't wanna leave any fuzzies on my picture. Oh, there goes my ink pad on the floor face down. Isn't that just your favorite thing to do? Don't we all do that now and then? Okay, I'm gonna press that down, and now voila, I have paint. I'm going to take off this mask, place it back over there. I'm going to clean my stamp set. I'm going to take it off, and now I'm going to put the hoodie on. More fuzziness. More fuzzy, fuzzy. Okay. Now I'm going to place this over top of her head. Oh goodness, Jack's starting to snore. Like this. It looks so funny, huh? It cracks me up. And then we're gonna take her hoodie. Uh-oh. You see that neck? I don't have that lined up. That neck is going to be right up on her face. So I need to clean off my stamp and try one more time because I put the collar up on her face and I don't want the collar up there. 
So I'm going to have to lay it down again. It looks like a lot of work. It's a little bit challenging, but I think if you did it a bunch that you would get used to it and then you would be totally fine. There we go. I just didn't want that neck up, uh, that up on her neck. I didn't think that would be a good idea. But, I mean, I learned how to do it. I had just practiced 30 minutes before I went live. So, um, it didn't take too much time to figure it out. I am having fun. And now I have another girl. Look at that. See how fast that was? That was really not that bad. It's a little bit, it's a little bit challenging, but look at the amazing looks. You post something like that on Facebook in our group, and everyone is going to ask you, where'd you get that stamp set from? And you're going to be like, um, it's this one. Because now we have this girl, we have her in a dress, we have her in a raincoat, and we have her in a hoodie. So now you have, look how much more you get out of one stamp set. And then, that's just the masking part. So once you learn the masking part and you get that down, you have all of these. You can save all your masks, use them again. They're helpful. If you've already stamped, they help a lot more with the lineup. You don't have to concentrate as hard. And then, for the other ones, I, again, I cut out this doll. I'm gonna glue her to this chipboard. So I used the die. It looks like, it's, we have matching dies, so I used the matching die and cut her out. Now it's gonna stick to all my magnets. With chipboard. So yes, these dies will cut chipboard. They cut this thin chipboard. And then I also stamped her and cut her out. And then I thought it would be great just to make her a little bit thicker and more sturdy first little ones that might want to play with her. I thought we'd put some glue on here. If we wanted, we could put a magnet behind it so that the clothes would stick to it. And then you'd have a paper doll set, which would be really cute and really fun. So I'm just going to press this down my espresso so it's thicker and if you wanted them even more thicker you could always do two I did cut I did punch two out just because I wanted to make sure just in case I wanted to make her thicker but you could do two instead of one but for now we're just gonna leave it like this it makes her a lot more sturdy she doesn't really flop around much so that's great and then you take some cool papers, so for this one, I actually took this paper because I thought it was pretty neat, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I made her raincoat in all these different colors? So I thought, that would be awesome. And then I found this blue jean paper. Hello, Tiffany. I found this blue jean paper. Oh, stuck my magnets together. All right, back to I found this blue jean paper. <laughs> and I thought it would be pretty neat to use the blue jean paper for the little, little pants. So I put them on there. And then while we have this whole space, we might as well do the rest. So then I thought, well, her dress would look really cute in this fun, springy kind of dress. So maybe just put it wherever you want the colors that you like. So I think maybe I'll center it around that green. So I have like a little green X on her dress. I'm going to lift these up. It's probably going to move this paper underneath a little bit. Nope. It didn't. Yay! And then, oh, I should have done the hoodie too, huh? Let's put that one up there. I'm going to grab another magnet from my other Misty. 
so I can hold that down. And look, we can do them all at the same time. So now I think I'm going to do the hoodie as well in pink. So we're probably going to have to stamp two jeans, but I only have one stamp. So we'll do the jeans again in a minute if we need to. So I'm going to stamp them all on these pattern papers that I chose. And then we're just going to cut them all out. I'm going to close that up a little so I have it. So look at, you could make all different kinds of patterned clothes for your little girl to wear. I'm going to pull these out and we're going to die cut them. We can die cut them all at the same time. I'm just going to leave these on here. If you fussy cut, you can fussy cut the tabs. And I'll worry about that later. Do what? If you fussy cut it, then you can fussy cut the tabs so you can wrap it around. Yes. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should just do that. Because you need something to attach it. That's true. So I die cut some of the clothes. And let me show you what I did. So before the live, I took the girl... Oh my goodness, these fingernails, I can't pick up anything. Okay, so I took the girl and I cut her some little jeans that fit right over top. I cut her a little raincoat like this. I did notice that you had to cut out the neckline in order to get the paper piecing to fit perfectly on top, but I'll show you that when I cut mine. So she can be dressed like this, which is super cute, or... She can wear this dress, which is really cute as well. Just think of how cute she'd be if you colored her up, too. But then my, my husband said, what if you fussy cut it? Then you could put tabs on it, which is so true. So we are going to actually do that. If you can mount it on your um, magnetic sheets, and then you can make a magnetic thing. Yeah, that's true. Or you could mount it on magnetic sheets. And you could put a magnet on the girl, and then you could just magnetically stick these on there. So I'm going to cut this one out. It won't take too long. I'm not going to put any um, notches at the bottom, but just off of memory from when I was a kid, I'm going to put one on the side. So all I'm going to do is just add a little tab over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be there. Or her dress is going to have to be around her torso. I know. I don't need you to tell me that. I got it. We're also going to put a couple of tabs right here at the top. So I'm just going to do the full thing for now. And we'll come back and cut out the parts that we need to. She also needs, and I don't, I have not tried this, so I'm hoping this will work, but we'll, we'll soon find out together. That's the fun about doing these lives. We get to find out together. So it didn't take too long, but think of how much fun a little girl would have with one of these. Okay, so yes, it has to be near the body. Yep. So we'll see. We need a little bit of a tab here. Go around here. And I'm going to leave two tabs at the top. I'm going to actually fold them over now. So I'll have them right, folds right where I want them to be. They're folding very easily, so that's great. Let me use my girl with the chipboard. I'm going to put these around her neck, see if they work. I want them to be around her neck first. Ooh, maybe not too close. So I'm just gonna cut in here a little bit. Give myself just a little bit more space. Right up close to her neck. I'm gonna use my tweezers to pull out the excess. And now it should fit around there. Yep, I see. 
It's almost there. Yep, snug and snug as a bug in a rug. These, this one didn't work so much, but the one around her neck was enough to hold it there in place. In the future, I'd probably put them up here so they would be right up close to her body, but you're right. What a great birthday gift for little girls, but you're right. It didn't, I needed it, but look, even with it on the neck, it really stays. So as long as you have the neck part down, you're pretty good. And the magnet might be a good idea for later. So these little tabs didn't work, but they would have worked if we'd have put them up here. But the neck ones seem to be holding it really well. Okay, so let's try this one. And this time I'm gonna be a little sneakier. I'm gonna hold it up to the light and make sure I know where I can put my tabs. So this one, we're gonna tab all of these and make them into, not that I don't have any grandbabies that I can give this to because I only have a grandson, but I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna put my tabs on her arms, like right here. And this paper is really helpful because it already has the lines for me. And what I need to tell you about this one is if we have to actually cut into the neckline, this is the part I was talking about, into the neckline right here. We have to cut this part out or we'll have it over her face. Yeah, she has a turtleneck on. Yep, and then she has a turtleneck on. That's right. And that is not what I want. So, So just practicing these, and this is on the fly. I wasn't even planning to make it a paper doll. I was just talking about it. So this one, I probably needed something at her neck, but I left a little flap right here so that it will fit up underneath her here. And then this one will fold over on this side, and this one will fold over on this side, and now she has her coat on. So the tabs worked really good on this one. And then she needs some little pants. So let's cut these ones out. We kind of need them on our hips for sure. Make them a little longer, so a little wider, so they hold really well. But this, yes, this could definitely be a really cute little gift. I think I would probably think about making them magnetic if possible. So they'd stay really well. Can you guys hear Jack? He's a bit mighty sleepy tonight. Okay, so now we have some little pant pants. And I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna take this off and put her pants on first. So I'm gonna put them up here. Just wrap them around. Then I'm going to take the this, put it back in there, wrap it around, and now we have this cute little girl with her paper doll clothes on. What the die cut through up in in that cheek? What? The die. What about it? Yeah, I would cut through a magnetic sheet. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. A magnetic sheet you can stick them to. So cute. So cute. So she can wear her little clothes and her little... And then we'll do our hoodie. We should do our hoodie, too. Because I need to talk about how you cut the hoodie. So... First, we're just going to trim around the outside. We're going to give her some tabs on the side. And 
And then I'm going to talk about how you cut the, the hoodie top part so that it stays on the doll. She has a ponytail all the way up here at the top. So I'm going to give her another tab at the top to help hold that hoodie on there. We'll go down here and over here. Then we're going to cut this tab right here. And I'm just winging that, of course. But if I was making it for someone, I'd probably spend a little more time, be a little more careful. But like I said, was in the center, if you just fold it and cut like this, then you can start cutting out along this line here. This part right here, come along here. And this part over here leaves her a bit down here at the bottom and then all the way around her face and any additional trimming we need to do we can do once we see how it fits on her face but we have to cut that center part out so that it fits over her like this so let's put her jeans back on probably should have put them a little higher up over her hips but I think it's good enough for now. Okay, so we gotta have our jeans on and then we gotta put our hoodie on. So this part will go over the top of her head and this part will go around this shoulder and around this shoulder and now she looks like she's wearing her little hoodie which doesn't stay very well, so magnetic might be way better for this one. But you get the idea. So there she is with her little pink hoodie on and her jeans. Super cute. So now you have a way of, and if you wanted to use this on a card, if you didn't want to necessarily do it like that, then with with the dress, I just cut, trimmed right at the top. See how when it when it cuts out, it puts that little lip of a border? I just cut it off the shoulders so that it would match perfectly with her shoulders, like this. And then we could just glue her dress on, and then you have the girl with the dress. Or you could take the shorts and glue them on exactly where you want, or the pants, glue them where you want them. And then you could take this really cute little raincoat, which I cut out the neck, again, just like I did with this one, and place it right on top. And that's how you paper piece. That's how you would paper piece these outfits onto her. So, what do you guys think? Is that super fun? Now, I did cut out um, these other pieces right here. So, this is the thank you, and this is the clipboard, which I thought was really cute. So, normally when I do skin tones, I generally choose which I will, maybe I will color her skin so you guys can see what she looks like all done up. But if I was going to choose her skin tone, I would say um, E000, E04, E11, E21, and E00. So I could take this grid and put in my triple zero, my E04, this is my five color combo, my E11, E21. This way you can see exactly what colors they look like with your markers. And then write them in there. This is E00, E21, E11. 
11, E04, and E000. So these clipboards were um, created so you could use these with any image that you were coloring. If you wanted to remember what color it was that you used, you can put the colors here and list them out to the side. So if I were going to color her, I would start with my E000 and just place that base coat on there. Luckily, we don't have to color any of her body. All we have to do is her skin and hair. Get our little doll ready. We're going to do her in fast color tonight. Because some of this part down here won't even be seen. Her arms will, but the rest of it won't. We're going to start right here and just do the bottoms of her legs. Because once we put her outfit on, you won't be able to see it anyway. And don't forget this ear. This is really, really cool. You like it? I think it's really cool, too. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see some of the coloring a little bit better. I'm going to use E04 next. I'm going to put some shadow along where her hair is. A little bit here and inside her ear. This is just a quick run through. I generally do a little bit slower when I'm coloring in these. But tonight we're just going to do a quick little. I'm going to give her a little bit of shadow up here around her, around her shoulders and around her arms where they're tucked in. And then a little bit down here in the corners where her shoes are. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to my E11. I'm gonna pr push that color back into it, into the last color to keep that shadow there pretty good. And this one is already on the chipboard as I'm coloring it, so. It's doing really well on the chipboard. I'm going to start bringing this down to kind of fill in her ear space. I'm going to do this with her ear. We're going to start building in a little bit of our nose at this point. A little bit of her shoulders. A little bit up from here. And then a little bit from here. So this is kind of the cheat way. You don't have to color the whole doll. <laughs> you just have to choose what color paper piecing you're going to do and what color you're going to do her shoes. And that's all you have to worry about. It works out really good. So E21, going to expand out a little bit more from where I, I put those last colors. I'm going to start building in a little bit around her eye with this color. This is kind of my true color, so we use a little bit more of this one. I'm going to start building her in a little bit of a chin here. Kind of coming down her arm a little bit further up from where we put the shadow. You don't have to do anything on the top part because you won't be able to see it. I'm just expanding out from this one. So now we're starting to, oh, I missed this ear. Now we're starting to get this done. Um, E00 is our last color, so we really need some little blushy cheeks. So I'm going to go ahead and pull R20. It's not my normal color, but again, this is a paper doll, so I kind of want her to have really rosy cheeks. So I like to put the rosy cheeks in before my last color because it softens it up a little bit. 
So this is E0, 0. Kind of left her a little bit of a style on her nose, but not too much. I don't like to make their noses very prominent, so it's just a personal style for me. And then we're just going to blend this out a little bit, even though we won't be able to see all of that. And then up here from her feet, up her leg. And there we go. Now we have all her skin tone all colored up. I'm gonna do a little bit more right here because we have a kind of a little bit of a dark line I didn't want. Okay, so that was it with our skin tones. We have to actually do her hair. And we're going to put on Let's see, what are we going to put on her? I think I'm going to put on this little outfit right here. So I'm going to do her hair with some pink. No, I'm going to do teal. So I'm going to do her hair in a dark brown with some teal on the end of it. Because I want it to match her outfit. So I'm going to start with my darkest brown, which is E49. And then I'm going to go to E27, E25, 23, and then I'm going to pull in some teal to put on the tips of, of her um, hair. And I think, let me swatch it real quick, See, make sure that these colors blend well together. This is 23. Oh yeah, this will be good. This is BG45. So I'm going to use BG45. Give her a little bit of a teal look to her hair. So we're going to start with E49. And we're going to do this part of her head where it's bunched together first. Because that would be very dark. To make her a little bun. And I'm going to do a little bit out from there because that's where the, the scrunchy part is. Some of my strokes will be a little longer than others, but this is just building in the shadow. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put some dark in here, but I'm not going to put it on the ends, the tips of her hair because I'm going to make those blue. I'm gonna give her blue bangs. But I'm not going to give her blue eyebrows, so I'm going to put a little bit of brown in that eyebrow. And now I'm going to switch to E27, which is my next color. I'm going to kind of start expanding out from that color, kind of following the flow of the hair. I'm going to put a little bit around the back because there's always some shadow where it's rounded. And then I'm going to start expanding out from these brush strokes right here. I'm not going to do every single one of them. I'm just going to put some random color in there because I still have two more browns to go before the blue. Next, I'm moving on to the E25. This is the true color, so I am going to go around here, giving it a little bit more color. Because she's not going to have any blue in her little bun. The blue is going to be on her, the tips of her hair. So I'm starting to build this out, giving her a little bit more of this brown color in her hair. And then E23 is my last brown color. So I'm gonna use this one back and forth to kind of smooth out that little bun. I'm gonna fill in that back part. And then I'm just gonna brush down a little bit further, do her eyebrow, leaving a little bit of space for those blue colors. I don't know what possessed me to put blue in her hair, but I just think it'll be cool. So here we go, BG45. 
We're going to start from the ends here. I'm going to start building in some of this blue. I think it'll look really cute and it'll make her very stylish. I mean, what little girl won't think it's cool with a girl with blue hair? I'm going to start working it in a little bit. Just doubling up on the bottom very tips of her hair just to make them a little bit darker than the rest. I'm going to go back in with my E23 and kind of blend that blue and brown together a little bit just to kind of make it a little bit more smooth there. Yep, like that. There we go. Now she has teal tips to her hair. I am going to come in one more time with my teal and just give it a little bit more go into the brown so that it's really, really smooth. There we go. Yep, love the blue hair. Yep, yep. Me too, me too. Oh, we have to do her eyes and then we have to do her shoes. But just to be cool, let's stick with the teal for her shoes. We'll just grab two more teal colors. So we'll grab 49 and let's see what colors. There's a really light one in here. So maybe we'll go with, let me swatch it because I'm just pulling this stuff out of my Tons of paper packs from Honey Bee, and I had to have the pack you used last night. <laughs> oh, some are on sale right now? That's great. Yeah, that paper pack from last night was amazing, wasn't it? This is BG13. I think I'll go with that one. So we have BG49, 45. 45 is what we used for her hair. And BG13. Some are on sale for... 250 so anyone needing paper now's the time it's a good thing I did that live when I did because you got a bargain okay so I'm using 49 around the bottoms of her shoes the back and the bottom I won't need a whole lot of that one for sure that is amazing Cheryl thank you for sharing that BG 45 I'm going to go along the top and along the bottom, kind of blend that out, leaving a little bit of white space for my last color. And then I'm going to use BG13, kind of fill that out, sort of a back and forth to smooth it out a little bit. Where's the sale? Honey Bee Stamps. Honey Bee. That's where I got these, all these papers you're looking at tonight were all out of Honey Bee paper pads that I got over the holiday break. And now Cheryl says they're on sale again, yay! Okay, so I'm gonna use a version of that blue for the, for the eyes. So I'm gonna use the same three colors I just used, but I'm gonna add a darker one, BG18. And I'm going to add my magic one. Is it Honey Bee? Uh, I believe so. Yes, honeybee.com. G00 as the magic one. So I'm going to go ahead and do her eyes. So I'm going to start off doing a little bit around the top where her eyelashes are. And then I'm going to do around the center of her eye with this darkest shade. And then I'm going to put some little lines, and this is going to start making her look a little freaky. Short ones, long ones, some from the outside in, some from the inside out. That's kind of the way I like to do it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Some from the outside in. Okay, and she looks a little crazy right now, but bear with me. BG49 is next, so I'm going to go around the outside of her eye with this darkest one. Because 
I want these eyes to remain pretty dark blue, almost like a teal. And then I'm going to use BG13. I think I might leave out 45. I might just use four colors on this, but we'll see. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do because they're so tiny. So I'm putting the BG13 in right now, just filling it in. And then we're going to do the magic color, which I can't live without, which is G00. And we're just going to make circular motion around the center of her eye so that these will really pop. You can see it start happening as you're doing it. Once you see it start happening, stop, because you don't want to go too far. Now let me show you up close what we're looking at. So I need to put those lines back in so you can really see them. So I'm going to go back with my BG18 and put some of those lines back in. Putting them in the same place I put them before. And then I'm going to go with my G00 one more time and just kind of soften those up just a tad. And now we have these sweet eyes. I'll hold them up close so you can see them. Look at how cute she is. And now we're going to put her clothes on. So we're going to put these on. So I'm going to glue them on. This is the paper piecing part that I thought you guys would find really fun. So we're going to lay them on here where they're just below her arms, but perfect for her waist. I'm going to shift it just a little to make sure I have the center button in the center of her body. And then I'm going to use this pretty, pretty brain coat. Oops, I just threw my glue. Didn't mean to. Sorry about that. And then I'm going to place it exactly where it needs to go so it matches up with her body. I'm going to use my... There we go. And so now, if you didn't want to necessarily put her... Um, on a card and you wanted to let the little ones play with them you can dress them all up put a chipboard behind them it makes them really strong super awesome and now she has her little clipboard beside her so you know what colors you used for her skin tone so you could put them in a put it in a little book so you always know what colors you used you could do a separate one of these clipboards for the blue color that you used so here's bg18 I like to start at the bottom, BG18. I like to start at the bottom with the darkest and work my way up, but that's your decision. This is BG49. This is BG45. This is BG13. So, you know, you guys, when we try all those colors out, you can make your own little clipboards like this, and you could use them for later. This is G00. So I'm going to come back in with my multi-liner, and I'm going to say G00, BG13, BG45, BG49 and BG18, and I'll say hair, and shoes, and eyes. There we go. And then you can put this clipboard right here beside her, and you would have the colors that you used for your girl. Oh, she's up a little high. There you go. You bring up the outfits too. You can do so much with this set. Oh yes, you can. 
So why don't we just do that? I have my bling right here. Thank you for that idea. But I have the little tiny, um, I have, where are they from last night? I have the little bitty bling. Bear with me one second, I'm almost there. The bitty bling. So these would fit perfectly as the buttons on her shirt, I think. So we could do maybe pink. Maybe we'll use pink. So we just lift these up, put them on the little dots. I love this set because I can do so much with it, making it look so different every time I do it that it's just awesome. So now I have buttons on her dress. I have the colors I used. I have paper piecing. And as a quick recap, you can do them um, paper dolls. We have clothes here that we paper dolled them together. Um, you can paper piece with the dress. You can make this girl by masking along with this one and this one and this one. These are all, this is the same one. These are all masked that we did earlier tonight so that you don't have to worry about the insides of the bodies and you can color them up however you want. And then you can paper pieces too. And you can change her hair and her skin and whatever to match your little outfits that you chose to cut out. This one is the, the hoodie, which is super cute too. I love the little punk hoodie. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh my goodness. This is so fun. So this is the the Ola OOTD set. Ta da! Huh? Oh, Dale, thank you. It's Ola Outfit of the Day. That's what it stands for. I just couldn't remember that. So, thank you, Dale. Um, so, anyway, it's Ola Outfit of the Day or OOTD. You get sentiments, you get the clipboard, and you get all the clothes to practice on and the paper doll girl, which you could also make squares and stamp her face over and over again and practice all different skin tones. And you can use the clipboard to keep track of your skin tones and colors. So there's so, this set is so universal and you have the stamps and the matching dies in the shop if you're interested. The claws out of colored paper, all scraps as well. Exactly. You could make so many with just the scraps that you have in your craft room. I mean, I have um, tons of scraps all the time. And all I did was mask them, make them, and then you could bling them up and everything. How awesome is that? So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was super fun for me. I've been playing around with this for, for a little while, but even before the live. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as much. This was a, a Jamie challenge. She challenged me to make different dolls. This is the bling that we have. It's called Rainbow Pearls. They're very tiny and easy to use. You could also, oh, let me show you one more thing. Don't go away yet. Watch this. Okay, let's use the pearls and we could give her earrings. <laughs> this is what I used to do with my little baby pearls like this all the time was earrings. I used to put earrings on these girls all the time. You can do earrings or necklace or <laughs> earrings. I love it. <laughs> I know it's so much fun. So this was super fun tonight was my last night till next week, right? It's Thursday. And then tomorrow, uh, we don't usually do a live tomorrow, but don't forget that Jamie and I will probably do some kind of live. Um, we did that at the same time. Um, 
Jamie and I will probably, one or both, will do a live on Saturday for the new release. So get ready. This is not part of the new release. This is what we already had. So um, I just thought showing you guys all the different ways to use it, you would, you could enjoy this set so much more um, than just seeing it in the shop. You'd be like, what am I going to do with that? And so I wanted to show all the big, all the things. And yes, Saturday's a big day. I am super excited. I here's your hint. I am flying high with excitement. That's your hint for Saturday's release. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. So you guys enjoy your weekend. I will probably see you at some point popping in on Saturday to show the cards I made for the new release. Check it out. Don't miss it. And I'll be back next week, Tuesday night, 9.30, and I'll see you guys then. Thank you for joining me.